I chose to get a haircut this last week. I'm not looking for affirmation or crit- criticism. Um, I usually tend to have my hair cut shorter than longer. <laughs> but I, um, I've already had several comments. That's not the point of the sermon. But while I was at the barber this last week, and there's a lady who cut my hair this time, and we struck up a conversation. Not like it was anything real personal, but I found out that uh, she is a mom and that she's the mom um, who has a, her oldest son just graduated from high school at Pickens County. So that just kind of struck up some conversation. So what's his plan? That's kind of what we talked about. And she said, well, he's planning to go, go to Kennesaw State. And I said, what's he going to study? Here's what she told me. He is planning a future in cyber technology. Friends, my 50th high school reunion is this week. We never talked about cyber technology. (laughs) And so a lot of things have changed. I mean, you understand some of that. Um, This last week, I also had the opportunity to hear the the now current president of the University of North Georgia. Some of you may have heard, may have met Dr. Michael Shannon. Among other things, here's what I heard him say. He is, he's leading University of North Georgia, and here's his quote, to be the most innovative, the most dynamic, and the most legacy making university in America. That's quite a statement. And so without me or anybody else quizzing him on that, he was basically saying, here's some of the things we are doing and going to be doing in order to accomplish that. We made a choice and here's our direction. I was really impressed. All came really close to saying, I'd like to go back to school. I didn't. But it's interesting to hear things like this, not just from one president. I'm glad, him, he's just right down the road, and he's very, very interested in what goes on here. But he said, among other things, and I'm trying to quote from his sharing, he said, the entire model of higher education has drastically changed, and universities, among other things, must change to meet the needs of today and tomorrow. Actually, when he was sharing, and then even with, with my, do you call it a barber? If it's a lady, the hair cutter? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's fine. You know who I'm talking about now. Um, I couldn't help but think about you. Not so much your hairstyle. That's not what I'm talking about. But hearing all the changes that are going on and how we, even as the chapel, have made a decision, a very significant decision, to call now our next chaplain, who, by the way, is preaching his last Sunday at his current church, and he's told me on a couple of occasions, um, he says it's going to be in a very emotional time for them, both sides. So with your eyes open, keep on praying, pray for them, for the church, for the Hollingsworths, but he's real excited about coming here. You see, the choice was not just us calling a senior pastor, a senior chaplain, but it's also him making the choice to come make his residence here and all those details. So it's more than just, oh, we want to come. We want to serve alongside of you. There's just so many things that are going on, which then prompts me to think about at least one passage of Scripture. You've already got it in your worship folder, it may be one of the more familiar places in Scripture. In just a minute, I'm going to read this, ask you to find Joshua chapter 24. We'll read that in just a minute. But here's basically the statement that prompts me to be part of all this. Choose you this day who you will serve. But then it goes on to say, but as for me and my house, You know the rest of that? We will serve the Lord. So I think it's not so much questioning our decisions, but it's it's really affirming the fact now we've made some choices, and many people know about that. So what are we going to do with it? You have noticed that the passage of Scripture is listed there, at least for you to read. 
uh, for, for you to find in your Bible, I'm going to ask now that you find, if you have a Bible or your own cell phone, Joshua chapter 24. It's my privilege to lead us. I'm going to be reading in just a minute verses 14 to 18. You see that listed. Friends, will you stand? We're standing in honor of the Lord. We're standing in honor of the reading of his word. This, my friends, is God's word. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, that they were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell. But as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who did these great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the people, including the Amorites who dwelt in the land. We also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Before you sit down, let me ask you to join me, then let's pray for ourselves and each other. Lord Jesus, thank you for the privilege you give us at any time to be among family and friends. Thank you for the privilege even now. And God, we know we need you, but we can't wait to hear what you've got to say. So hide me behind the cross. It's not about me. It's really not about us. It's all about you. So somehow would you speak and allow us to experience the power, the grace, the mercy of God, even as we prepare ourselves to experience Holy Communion. We can't wait to see what you're up to. And it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, please. You know, I really can't help but say and declare to you that one reason I chose this passage was because we made some really significant choices. I'm grateful. We've chosen. The Lord's led us to choose a senior pastor, a senior chaplain. He has chosen to join us. That's really good. Then I start thinking, is there a place in Scripture? Yes, we find a place. Choose you this day is not a bad place. If you've heard this passage before or not, don't be too surprised there's really three things that take place in this passage. I will suggest sometime in the next week, weeks, that you review that passage. It's a long one, really the whole chapter, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I would like at least to call attention. There are three things, and between you and me, these are the things that wasn't just way back then for God's people. This is for us today. So one of the things that took place, and you've read this before, they reviewed their history they glance back kind of what we do and what we need to. Here's what was going on. Here's how God was at work. Here's how what we got to see God do. And it gave them, as it does us, the opportunity to look back and to celebrate. I think that's kind of where we are right now. It's not, I mean, 50th anniversary. I don't want to forget that. This is an important time for us to be reminded, not so much look at what we've done, but look at what God has done. And in the midst of all that, they realized that they had a decision to make. I'm just going to re review verse 15. Actually, I read this just a minute ago. But in the midst of their reviewing their history, then they said, we got to make a choice. I mean, we made a choice in the past. But it's like every day, choose you this day. And, and the declaration was, in that context, as it is for me, now, as for me and my house, we're going to choose the Lord. 
So one of the, the, I guess you'd say the first thing that took place is they reviewed their history. Don't be too surprised. And that's a lot of this narrative in this chapter. But here's the second thing they did. They actually declared their decision in a way that helps me to reaffirm, we decided, we are, we kind of put our gauntlet down. We are moving forward with the leadership of a senior pastor, and that helps us thank the Lord. For, thank the Lord for a leader who's helped us during a transition. And you know, matter of fact, go ahead and thank the Lord for the leadership of a senior transitional pastor. Go ahead and applaud. Thank you so much. But friends, this is part of the story. They made a decision and they, they start not just talking about it, but they give their right to say, we've chosen as for me and my house, this is what we're going to be doing. But here's the third thing they did. And we didn't, I did not read this part. My, my suggestion at your convenience, don't do it during lunch today, but sometime in the next day, week, month, pick up where we finished because they were challenged with the decision they made. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that again. Yes, I'm glad you made that decision. You've chosen to serve the Lord, but have you really? This is a part of the passage that bothers me because in a way, if I were Joshua, which I'm not, I would encourage anyone who has made the decision, serve the Lord. Yes, we've served the Lord. Don, you've been doing this for a long time. You served the Lord. You did it years ago. You do it every day. But what, what Joshua starts doing, he says, is, I'm not really sure if you understand how serious this is. You're witnesses among each other. People are watching us because we say we're going to follow the Lord. Gene, I don't mean to put you or me on the spot, but I think for a Christian, for a follower of Christ, it makes it that much more of a challenge when we say, watch me, we're going to serve the Lord. And we now have people all over, not just in Big Canoe, not just here in the United States, but people are watching us based on what we say is our decision. But you know that. So as you keep on reading in this passage, it's not just made a decision, talk about their past, and, but it gives us the right to realize that people are going to be questioning our decision all along. Don't be too surprised about that. But before we come to the point of celebrating Holy Communion, I don't think I'm taking this out of context. I think there's at least five different choices that you and I can make, and we make them basically every day. Will we or will we not? I wrote down five. I don't think I'm asking you to write them down. I think these are things we could remember. Here's the first. We have the opportunity every day to celebrate the choice to love and serve and obey the Lord. That is not just 10 years ago, 20 years ago. We have the opportunity, if we're saying it out loud or not, Lord, I'm choosing to love you. Here's a second. I think at this point they'll go by kind of quickly, so... Here's a second. I think it gives us the opportunity to, to literally choose every day to be grateful. I, I don't mean just among other believers. I don't mean just in our community. I, I read something. I know th this was on the Internet, and so you know if it's on the Internet, it's true. But here's the statement. There was a study recently of gratitude and mortality among older adults and it found that those who more frequently noticed and felt gratitude for positive experiences tended to live longer. Believe it or not. Now, I'm going to give just a minute or so of explanation. I'm not going to try to read the whole thing, but here's, it kind of caught my eye because it says a psychologist recruited a group of people and they asked one third to write up Five things for which they were, granted, uh, they were grateful every week. A second group was asked to record hassles or irritations. Then a third group was told to record events that affected them just generally over the week. The story, the, the results of that was, guess which of those three groups fared better? 
I'll just let you guess. In another study, it says participants who wrote letters of gratitude to other people were happier and more fulfilled and satisfied with life. This is not a commentary on our culture, but I know we, I've gotten away from writing or even receiving letters. It's not about that point, but I tend to do the emails, I tend to do the text. This was, maybe I need to write a note. Hey, it's not just generally, but I want to learn along with us to express gratitude. I think that's a choice. A third choice that we can make every day is to be available. I mean, if I want to spiritualize this, it's to be available to the Lord. But you know, we live in a community. We, this chapel is built on volunteerism or volunteering our, our, our time. And every, many, many of us in this room, you volunteer because you have out of passion, out of a concern, something that you enjoy doing is it's to help the chapel, right? Say yes. And so now we're, we're not putting a period there. It's like that's who we are, and we're going to continue doing that. I'm not trying to enlist or recruit, but we're going to always need, be needing people who are making themselves available. What's interesting to me, Susan, is that most people who are volunteering our time, we're doing it out of our own passion. And maybe that's where God is helping stir us up. So I want to be available. Here's a fourth. I think we have the opportunity to choose to be prayerful. I don't mean this just in a spiritual sense, but I want to pray for you. I want to, I mean, you come to mind, Jack, and I want to lift you up. And it's not just on my list, but I, people will come to my heart. Dennis, I thank the Lord for you, but it's not just, I'm going to tell you, I'm praying for you. I want to make that a part of a lifestyle. And I think it gives us the right moving forward, no matter what you've done in the past. I want to choose to be prayerful. And then here's the last. I'm not asking you to try to remember the five. I'm not sure if I could without looking at my notes, but here's the fifth. I want to choose to be an encourager. Have you ever heard the name Truett Cathy? If you have, raise your hand. It's all right. I mean, it, what a great place. I mean, we lived within, you know, we're just kind of the vicinity. I was going to say, let's go out to eat there, but they're closed today. <laughs> so... The, the, the fact of the matter is some people have kept up with the legacy, and it's not just about a business, but the kind of person he was. And so many people, they wrote about him or they would share testimony about him and said he was probably one of the greatest encouragers around. So don't hear me trying to critique that, but I came across a statement that he made, and I thought it was pretty cool. Here's, here's what he said. You know when you encounter someone who needs encouragement if they're breathing. <laughs> you can choose to be an encourager. So I'm not trying to suggest that you can't do those things unless you have a relationship with the Lord. But as we've said before, it sure does help because it change, begins to change your heart. Speaking of choices, we're going to celebrate communion in just a minute. I used to think that this was really about our choice in loving and obeying the Lord. In reality, this is an expression of the Lord choosing to love us. It's his broken body. It's his blood that's shed for us. And so we come now as a family of faith responding to his choice for us. What a great time of worship. I'm glad.